my name is Anique Jackman. I'm the 2018 Caribbean Toastmasters speech champion. I'm also an author and a blogger. And I'm very excited because you are joining us for the launch of the speakers series. I love seeing faces. I'm an energy feeder. So I know we all had a long day at work today, but if you can put yourself on camera, that's perfect. I love to get the vibes. Mr. Henry, we like to see the faces and the expression and yeah, see well, the vibes. For sure, for sure. So I hope you have your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, your glass of juice, your glass of wine, you know, fix your hair, you've got your, <laughs> your shirt on at least, and we can see you on camera. So happy, happy to have you all. Now, how many people are familiar with the masterclass concept? You can either raise your hand or put uh, an emoji up in the chat, but I don't know if people are familiar with the masterclass concept. But the masterclass formula is that you get a very well-known personality. It could be a celebrity, a thought leader. It could be an expert in their field. And they share their experiences and tips on their particular area of expertise with an audience. And the idea is that it leaves the audience feeling inspired and you go away feeling like you've learned a lot. I have had the desire to offer master classes for the Caribbean because we have an incredible amount of talent in our backyard. Our backyard is rich with the most dynamic personalities but we don't often get to hear their stories. So the idea behind this series is to share conversations with some of these individuals. And hopefully, I, I want that when you all leave here this evening and for the future conversations we're going to have, you leave here challenged, you leave here inspired, you leave here with at least learning one thing, one thing that hopefully you can apply professionally or personally, or maybe both. Now tonight, we are coming to you live from the gorgeous Caribbean club in the Cayman Islands. And for those of you who live in Cayman and you've never checked out Caribbean club for a staycation, you must have a look at them, fantastic property. And for those of you who love to travel and you can't wait to book your flight to the Cayman Islands, because I know there are quite a few of you on this, when you book that ticket, here's a, an option of a gorgeous place to stay on the iconic Seven Mile Beach. So I want to thank Caribbean Club for hosting us for this conversation. In terms of housekeeping, we're all going to be muted, but we want you to chat with us. So put it into the chat, your comments, your questions. I have our technical team, Mr. Mark Ray. He's handling certain things in terms of the videos, etc. But then we also have Nikita Kisun, who is managing the chat. So she will let me know when you have your burning questions and comments that you want to add. Now we've got the housekeeping out of the way. Everybody is a storyteller. What is the point of this session? The point of this session is that we will learn the importance of storytelling and the techniques that will turn an average presentation into awesome. And my very <laughs> first guest, who's gonna be showing and sharing on how to make these presentations awesome with storytelling, is the artistic director for the Cayman National Cultural Foundation, but he has a long history in theater. He's one of the founding members for a regional theater group called Olawi, Olawi. <laughs> and one of the things that this group did is that they toured with an, an all Caribbean repertoire. So everything that they were touring uh, with was based on Caribbean works. And he has represented Guyana, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands. He's worked on a festival on, for storytellers called Gimme Story here in the Cayman Islands. And I would say that he's worked with some of the best storytellers in the Caribbean and maybe I say the world, because I think he's mentioned India, yeah, we, Australia. We brought people in. Oh yes, oh yes. In fact, I was listening to him giving some critique to some aspiring storytellers that made me go from last year, everybody, last year, December, I must talk with this gentleman. <laughs> he has been honored 
as a Caymanian cultural pioneer. And the Queen has also recognized him <laughs> with an MBE for his work in culture and heritage development in the Cayman Islands. So put your hands together, get the applause emoji <laughs> up as we welcome the one and only Henry Moodoo. Thank, yes. thank you, Henry. All right, good intro there. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. <laughs> Mr. Henry, we reach. Yes. It was, it's been a, a lot of planning to yes. get here, but we are here and I'm really excited that you're the first guest for this. And let's get this off the bat with this conversation flowing. Because for those people who are thinking that storytelling is just something very casual, something for stage, who do not realize there's a place for storytelling, even in technical and formal presentations, Let's dispel that myth. What do you think? Well, I think like the, like the topic says, everybody is a storyteller. It means that everybody has a story and you can learn to tell the story. So I'm turning this whole thing up on its head now. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a story. As a matter of fact, you have many stories. But what you may not be able to do is to tell that story. There's a thought around also that says that stories stories come from all over the world it comes from anywhere from your backyard from your grandmother from your uncle from your aunt and most of all i would like to say from your life mm. because we and, and i will talk a little bit more about that just now but human beings are basically um a collection of memories mm. memories that's all we are mm. so if you take our memory away we are basically shells. We are not able to communicate, which is which is essentially what what the way society operates or the way we try to regulate our lives and our existence. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to communicate, whether it is sign language, uh, you know, or whether it is it's through through gesture, which is sign sign language, or or through speech, which we have, which which I'll talk a little bit more about that. What what speech is? The, yeah, the uh, what which is codified, mm -hmm. um, thoughts codified. Yeah. When we talk about that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, but everybody's a storyteller and everybody can learn to, to storytell. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, there's no, I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression that suddenly tomorrow morning after one session, you're going to wake up being a storyteller. You mean it, after this math <laughs> class, you're not going to get up being no. an expert? Well, but <laughs> well, it, it, requires, it requires what a lot of practice because, because being a theater person, Mm -hmm. um, I know how long it takes to produce a play. Right. If you right. if you're working with professionals, you probably will be able to do a two-hour play if they're very good. You'll probably do the play in about a month, okay. four weeks. But you're talking about rehearsing every day, hmm. a full day mm -hmm. from from nine in the morning to five or so in the afternoon, full day. Right. If if you are working with amateurs, as as we do in the Cayman Islands, mm -hmm. uh, most of our actors amateurs in the sense that they are not paid for it. Right. 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 But if you're working on choice, it will take you. It could take you up to eight months because you're teaching as you are as you're teaching them technique mm -hmm. as you as you're going along right. teaching them to play. But mm -hmm. but they have to, so the word rehearsal. I want to suggest is that there's a there, 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 there's a prefix which is re and there's 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 the second word is hear. Mm -hmm. So to rehear to hear again. So when you rehearse, what you're doing is you you're hearing. The same thing over and over and over and over again. And eventually it sticks. Not all of it may, will stick, but some of it will stick. And that's how over a period of time, actors are able to go on stage and say, you know, thousands and thousands of lines and, and, and be good at it. So you, yeah. you will eventually do it, but it will require uh, uh, practice and will require dedication. I love that because you've, you've addressed two things. First of all, that storytellers are made because you know it's like leaders they talk about leaders are, are born not made and there's that whole yeah. conversation yeah. and argument so storytellers you can develop storytelling techniques they won't mean as mr henry says yeah. you get up one morning and you're a master storyteller but i i saw a question in the chat about the ingredients of a good story and we're going to get into that because the techniques we're going to share with you tonight will allow you to in, incorporate those into what we what you do on a day-to-day -day basis 
And then I love that you said rehearse to rehear. And I, I heard you. So ladies and gentlemen, I have had many conversations with Mr. Henry. And every time I speak with him, I learn something new. So the last time he talked about rehearsal, he said, when you're done, it's like you set it and forget it. You set it and forget yeah. it. Yeah. And I appreciate that because you're talking, you know, from the actors on the stage. Yeah. But I come from a background of public speaking and we call it practice, you know, mm -hmm. in Toastmasters, for example, we're saying mm -hmm. it's the three P's, practice, practice, practice. Right. Right. And I will, I always share this story with mm -hmm. people because when I was practicing to compete, my coach said to me, you should have this speech embedded so much in your head yeah. that you can wake up three o'clock in the morning and you are able to give that speech without missing a beat yeah. because you've rehearsed. Yeah. 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 Well, that is what actors do essentially. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I want to say again that the, the distinction that we, we make between an actor and a storyteller, it's a very small distinction. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of the, of the medium that they use to get to get their message across. Mm -hmm. Some use a play, uh, um, you know, the, the actors may use a play, mm -hmm. and the storyteller might write his own story, or he might use the story that someone else, you know, uh, has written. Right. So, so it's just a matter of the channel that they use. Mm -hmm. But essentially, when we're talking about, about actors, mm -hmm. about storytellers, they're the same people, in, mm -hmm. in a way, in a way. And I, 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 I share the, the pyramid that I that I okay. that I drew mm -hmm. uh, to, to describe the whole how people can learn. But somebody asked about learning about storytelling, mm -hmm. and I, I'll describe the pyramid, and that will bring in what the question that you that you just posed. That's okay. that, the, the, the right? ingredients. The thing about the ingredients, yes. Okay, so I I'm going to put up what Mr. Henry is referencing, so we can get into some of the tips of storytelling. Yes. And I, but I wanted to check. Nikita, Nikita, question master, how are we doing with comments and questions? Anything that you want to flag right now? Because I know I saw something pop up from a Mr. Randolph Chase. Hello, Mr. Chase. Welcome. Mm -hmm. if, I, if it's the Randolph Chase, I'm thinking he's, he's beaming from the U.S. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so Nikita, is there anything you want to flag for us before we go into the tips with Mr. Henry? All right, I, and we're going to get you unmuted in a minute. And uh, there you go. Hi, Nikita. Hi, Anik. Hi, just two questions in the chat from Mr. Randolph Chase. Um, you have them already. What's the ingredients of a good story? And then mm -hmm. there's a follow up question where he asks Are you only referring to the oral tradition? The oral tradition of storytelling. Yeah. And I, no, no, no. Yes. So hopefully coming out of this, you know, as Mr. Henry just said, you will be able to apply this throughout. So at this point, we are going to share the screen and Mr. Henry is going to go into a little bit more about the pyramid. I think this pyramid is really helpful. I, actually, it's on the screen right now. Um, it's a little small on our end, so. Mm -hmm. But you, if you want to speak to it, Mr. Henry, it's, yeah. it's this one right. Okay. Here. So what what I try what I try to do, <clears throat> mm -hmm. is to try to create a, a visual image, right. so that people can can reference some of the things <clears throat> I, I talk about. Mm -hmm. So essentially, in the center of this of this triangle here, you have three three things which are essentially the same. You have the story. Right. Then you have a topic, and then you have a message. Story, so, topic, <clears throat> message. Okay. Well, what I what I wanted to, to mention, and I think we talked a little bit about this before, mm -hmm. is that the topic is a different thing from the message, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and I and I, and I, <laughs> I don't hear about about the topic and the message because let's say that the topic, for example, is cultural preservation and development in the Caribbean, right? Mm -hmm. Then what is the message that you want to share with people? The message might be the conservation in Cayman, for example, as Caymanians, we might say we could attack that topic by having a, a message which says, which deals with the conservation and rest of restoration of a house that we know here, of Miss Lassie's house, for example. Mm -hmm. So our message is to show that 
with all of what is happening around the region. Let's say that we, that we can show, let's say in, in a place like Guyana, where many of the old traditional buildings are, are rotting, essentially, the, the, the city hall is rotting, and, and they've, they've not done much about it. For whatever reason, and it may be good reasons, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying, let's say it's now. Then we in Cayman can say, look, our message in this whole topic that we are discussing, which is cultural preservation development in the Caribbean, our message is to say that Cayman is ahead of other countries because we have looked, taken an old house, which is now 149 years old, mm -hmm. and it was finished, I think, in 39, 139, it was finished in 1881. Mm -hmm. And so we have seen that, appreciated what it's worth to the country, and then we've done it. So you have the topic there, which is the overall topic that we're dealing with, which is in the Caribbean. And then we, our message within this topic. So we have to look for what the topic is and what the message within the topic is, right? Yeah. So now the mess. So so if we come back again on this 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 uh this triangle, we have on the the, the left ascending side we have this, the sender, speaker, actor. Same person, the person who is a storyteller, if you want to call it that, is the sender of the message. The actor is the sender of a message of the play, mm -hmm. right? And then if you look on the opposite side, you have the recipient or the audience as, as the, the people in our chat room now. Yes. They're, they're our audience. Right. And then, so they are, are, are receiving our message that we're sending to them, mm -hmm. which is that anybody can be a storyteller, mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. can be a storyteller also, mm -hmm. right? So now, so now, if you look at these things, now, I put at the, at the bottom there in huge letters, communication. Right. So essentially, what we are doing when we write a story, tell a story, whether it's the oral tradition or whether it is, it is, it is, it is the performance tradition, whatever it is, the, we are telling a story. And in that story, we, are, we, are, I, we, I, we have a sender, speaker, actor, etc., mm -hmm. and then we have somebody who's receiving. So those two elements, the person sending, the person receiving, mm -hmm. right? Now, let's come down to the message. So the message could be delivered either by words, mm -hmm. through music, mm -hmm. or both. Right. And you might use various things, mm -hmm. leaving out the words. Now you have the words at your, at your base. Right. But an actor would have his body. Yes. He would have facial expressions. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that a public speaker standing in front of a podium doesn't have to use his body and, and his eyes yes. and understand clearly how you connect with an audience through using the eyes. Mm -hmm. because when you're a speaker or an actor or, or a sender, if you want to call it a storyteller, mm -hmm. what you have is this. Right. The, the, the major element of you is your, from your neck up. Mm -hmm. they, they don't need to see anything else. But if they see your body, then you have gesture. Right. Because gesture helps to underscore what we're talking about. Yeah. You will see, I don't know if you will see it, but in the Paul Keynes Douglas tape, Paul talks about, 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 about gesture and he says, if you want to shut Caribbean people up, if you want to stop them from talking, tie their hands. <laughs> they can't talk. If you don't, it, it is true. Caribbean people, can, we can't talk without our, using our, our hands. Yes. Yes. And as yes. Shakespeare would say, you know, as he, the, the advice he gave to his actors um, in, the, in the play Hamlet, um, he, he said, do not saw the ear thus. You know, <laughs> saw the ear, just moving your hands all over the place. I like that, right. Mr. Henry. So now, so now, <clears throat> let's take the the, the, the sender now, mm -hmm. right? So you have now the message being delivered through music or both. And I say music, right. music sends a powerful message, right? And 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 then the, and then you do it with words also. Um, now an an actor, for example, delivers the lines of a playwright. The playwright has already written those lines. Mm -hmm. So the discipline is to learn those lines and deliver them to an audience. But it is not as clinical as just learning lines. Mm -hmm. It is a clinical of traveling back along the lines to the essential point where the lines came from, mm -hmm. where the lines came from, which is thought. Mm -hmm. The first thing we have is thought. And then thought has to be translated it has to be codified into, into language or speech. Mm -hmm. And every country, you know, different countries have their own language. Mm -hmm. So that 
if they were if you were to speak Swahili to me, then I would I would have no clue what you're talking about. Right. right? And if I was to speak, say, Jamaican or Caribbean or Bajan dialect to an African person, he may also not have any any understanding of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So the thought is important. So the first thing you have is a thought. You're writing a speech. You, you, you want to know what you're writing. So the thought comes. You're thinking, okay, what's the speech? Cultural preservation, development in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And you, your thought has to come. Then you have to take that thought, change the thoughts into words. And the actor or any person who is the sender, right. a musician will use notes, right? Musical notes. I don't know enough about music mm -hmm. to give you the full detail of that. But they will use notes of rhythm and so on. Mm -hmm. But speech has rhythm also. So ah. all of these things are important, right? Speech has stops. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the, the sense of a speech comes through the way we, where we put our stops, mm -hmm. right? And where we put our emphases. So you have words that are, if you don't emphasize a word uh, 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 co correctly, or if you don't put the underscoring at the particular syllable, you may get the thought wrong. Mm -hmm. Again, or if you see, um, no comma, and you put a comma. For example, uh, one of the things that Paul, you will see in Paul's video is that a guy is driving a car and he sees something in the road, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he says, what is that in the road ahead? You see, so, it, so he wants to say, what is that in the road ahead? But he said, what is that in the road ahead? And he puts a question mark. So the point is when you don't get your punctuation right, yeah. right? And you, you're in trouble. Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. No. Oh, that, so, so then the thoughts have to come first. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you, you have your language, which is, it, it, it moves into. And then within all these thoughts are feeling. So I say here that thoughts are codified into words that make up phrases, sentences, paragraphs. And these are stitched together by punctuation, commas, semicolons, etc. Right. For the actor, and this is where I think, what I think is important for the actor is that because if you if words are written for you already, mm -hmm. you have to find why people are doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Why are they saying certain things? So right. you have what is called the dramatic action in it, what, what somebody is doing. So it, it's different from activity. So activity is 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 if I smoke a cigarette, mm -hmm. right? The action is why I'm smoking the cigarette. Mm -hmm. My wife is pregnant and I'm I'm walking along the the hotel corridor because I'm nervous. I'm smoking a cigarette because I'm uh -huh, anxious and nervous uh -huh. because I don't know. Mm -hmm. So even if you're writing a, a, a speech, a, you know, all of these things come and it's your command of language and understanding, right, mm -hmm. of how you phrase. And this is why we come back to set it and forget it. Mm. Is that when you, when, when, I, actors have to know that they have to, they have to unlearn the lines in a kind of way, mm -hmm. if, if I can say that. You learn the lines, but you have to almost set it. You set them in your head. You know what they're about. You know what they're saying, and then you and then you, you stop. Okay. You so I'm going to I'm going to just do some questions. But before I get to the questions or the comments, I want to reiterate some of the key points that Mr. Henry just shared. First of all, it does not matter what you're doing, what what you're writing, or what you're presenting. You need to be clear about your message. So you may have your general topic. And this might be for work, it might be for social function where you're speaking, and you have the general topic, but you need to be very clear what is the message you're giving to your audience. You as the sender, what are you giving your audience? And then when you are clear on that, that's how you start to build your material, so the speech that you're writing. And I love that the reminder that the language we choose is important because language has rhythm. And we, uh, an audience is attuned to the rhythm. They, they're attuned to the words that we select. They are, to your point, the pauses and the stops. Yeah. You know, that's very important where it comes to emphasis. I also want to say, Mr. Henry touched on something very important because sometimes the material we present is not ours. We might, when we know we are putting our content together and it's our material, we're very clear sometimes on the message. Right. But some of us have been in the position where we've been handed something to present. What happens then? You still have to determine, as Mr. Henry says, just as an actor would have to determine, okay, this is my part in this play. 
what was the what was the intent of the writer what was the message that they intend for me to give so we got we have to make sure that we are clear even if it's not our material the message that is expected to be delivered to the audience the message we are expected to send and then i i love the reminder it's not just the words but it is what we do with our body language. And you're right, Mr. Henry, Caribbean people, we talk a lot with the hands, the hands, the hands. The hardest thing as a speaker, and this is coming in my, my public speaking training, is that we were told you need to be very intentional about your gestures. Eye contact isn't so bad, you're right. The facial expressions tell the audience uh, just as much about your content as the words you choose. But the whole, what do you do with your hands? And the hardest thing is to speak with your hands at the side. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, the yeah. hardest yeah. thing. I, it feels like something is wrong with you. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to saw the air. Yeah. <laughs> we don't well, want to saw the air. Yeah, but just if it's, it, as long as gesture doesn't become distracting, mm -hmm. if you're presenting something on stage, if, 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 if it becomes distracting, then that's a problem. But I think what we've got to recognize also because people come from different cultures and they're cultural thing. I mean, I mean, speaking, speaking demonstratively and using our hands in the Caribbean is a cultural thing. It's not just something which we do it because we don't know how to speak or anything. We emphasize the words. We use our hands. Our hand is almost underscoring the lines. We're drawing lines under the words when we talk mm -hmm. and it helps us with all kinds of things. So that's a cultural thing. And so I, I won't encourage anybody to drop it all together. Mm -hmm. But I would say, is that just be yourself but again just just be aware that like everything else you can overdo gesturing and therefore you want to you know keep it keep it so that it, it's not distracting and the person your receiver is not looking at your beautiful hands rather than listening to you <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's do a quick check-in on the chat and uh, with regards to questions nikita do you have anything for us Ah, oh, this is an interesting one, Mr. Henry. Yeah. Would you say that using our hands is as if we were speaking from our soul? Yes, yes, because, like I said, we're underscoring things. Mm -hmm. You know, we're on the, we, 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 like if you say something is hard, you know, you, you, you know, it, it, it's hard and you do this kind of thing, you yeah. know. So, and that is passion. I, you know, I would translate speaking from the soul to, to what, what I would call passion. When somebody has a passion for something that they're doing, you can hear it. You can hear the word, how I said passion just now. So it's not, I have a passion for something. You know what I mean? I have a passion for something. Yeah. So it, it, it's these kinds of things which you learn over, over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you give speeches or you talk or you act and you don't get feedback. You know, like mm. if somebody, you know, your friends will come and tell you you did well. Yeah. But actors in, in countries that have a great acting traditions um, and that are slightly more enlightened about theater, uh, you, you get reviewers. And of course, you know, some people don't read reviews because they don't like them or, or they tear them up or they, they avoid the paper. <laughs> but reviewers will tell you exactly, you know, how you did. Yeah. So you have a little bit of a feedback on things that you do if you're an actor. Um, storytellers also, but people don't review storytelling. So it's very difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the worst person to go and ask how you did was your, is your friend. Hmm. They're going to be kind to you. If you're a good friend, he will, he will tell you if you stink or whatever. But generally, um, people will be kind to you. And I think that's, that's heartening because, you know, one of the greatest fears that people have ha would have to do with, would have to do with, you know, getting horrible feedback. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, people think your, your speech is the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... You know, we do know there are moments when we aren't the best. Yeah. It really is thinking, but you don't want the audience yeah. to reflect that because yeah. that, that actually can throw you completely off. Right. If you have a bad experience speaking, it becomes harder for you to get back up and speak yeah. again. But I think, yeah. Nikita, you had something for I, us? Can, oh, sorry. Can I just come in on yes. something yes. here? It, 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 you, you're talking about the... Um, what was it? Oh, the audience. Mm -hmm. Just remind the me. The feedback, that. you know. The, the feedback. Yeah. I want to say this. Uh, be careful when you're, if you're speaking to an audience, like if you're standing at the podium and so on, and even if you're an actor or storyteller, never believe that silence in an audience is, is, an, is an indication that they're not hearing you, that they're not listening mm. to you, or they're not appreciating you. Mm. The most dreadful thing 
people can have on stage if they're talking to people or sending a message is silence. But, and this is why you say it takes time because very quickly, if you do this often enough, you will learn that you will learn to pick up, you know, signals from an audience that they are with you. You will watch them, you will see them, you look at them yeah. and you're scanning the audience and you will see they with you. Many speakers, when they're speaking, I know it's a technique with many speakers, they, they do quotations from great people and they do jokes. So they'll tell somebody who start out and they'll say so and so, mm. you know, did I tell you the one when my uncle was in a van, wherever, wherever, they'll tell you a joke. Yes. And usually people who teach you public speaking or so on, they'll tell you, you know, you've got to get the audience on your side. Mm. And that, so don't believe that it's silence is, is, is the fact that they don't like you. Right. They, so then that, that built into the idea of storytelling, um, yes. Mr. Henry, because yes. storytelling is about, when you're telling a story, it goes back to your idea of memory mm -hmm. and thought. And for some of us, we're, we may be sharing stories that are ours, personal, yeah. you know, things that happen to us or to happen to someone we love and care about. And again, we feel like if we don't get a response to people when we share those stories, that that's a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. You're right. The silence may not be an indication that they didn't get the message yeah. in your yeah. stories. Yeah. Because stories tell many mm -hmm. stories is how, that's how you give your message. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's how you give your message to the audience. Sometimes that's how you break the ice. That's how you engage them. Mm -hmm. It's the stories that you use um, to be able to connect. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because that lent itself to some comments. But Nikita, I know I had you waiting for like ever, but you know how it is when this conversation is good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, a couple great questions in the chat. Um, the first one is someone is asking, by referring back to thought, does that help us remember our base and find our place if we get lost? Then, yeah. so going do you want to, to take that one first? Yes. So okay. when, when you're think when you refer to maybe repeat that again for us so we can make sure we are clear. Yeah. By referring back to thought, mm -hmm. does that help us remember our base and find our place if we do get lost? Mm -hmm. So I would say if it, I could just based on some of the things that have happened to me. Um, one, because it's we, when we reference thought, it's the content that we're building, where it, where it mm -hmm. came from, yes, yes. Um, what the sources we drew from in order to do our material. Um, when you, you've written that, that is your original content, and you've rehearsed, as Mr. Henry says, then you're more likely to remember it. And even if you don't, if you get up to speak and you forget a part of it, there's a, a memory recoil. Yes. Because it's your original story and, you know, it's your thoughts that you have outlined for your message, mm -hmm. you are going to remember a portion of it. Something is going to come back to you to allow you to continue, even mm -hmm. if you forget a portion. Well, the only way I can explain this um, in, in the years that I, I perform is that, and this is why I emphasize rehear mm -hmm. or rehearse. If, if, you, if you learn your material so well, whether it's the story you're telling, the speech you're doing, or what if you're doing the speech, or be it if you're not reading it. But the, the, the way you do it, there is a, there is a magic that happens, mm -hmm. and that happened with me. And it happened when I was younger. I would, you know, I would lose my way in 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 places. Mm -hmm. But once I started acting and I and I learned the speeches, what happened to me mm -hmm. is like I would be. I would be doing the lines, but I'm not thinking about the lines at all. Mm -hmm. And the lines are just coming, you see? Because you have learned it so well. This is the thing about setting it and forgetting it, mm -hmm. is that what you do to yourself is that you, you tell yourself, and I don't mean tell yourself, saying to yourself, mm -hmm. but by rehearsing, what you do is you make those lines your own. And they have become lines that you have never spoken before. Hmm. Now, now, let me try to explain that. If, if, I, if I'm sitting here with Anik and we're just talking, say, Anik, so, hey, you know, what, happened this, what happened this morning? Mm -hmm. Wait, tell, tell. If you sit with your friends and you talk, you have never rehearsed that speech. 
you have never rehearsed the conversation. You've never rehearsed it. it. It came to you that you didn't see your friend this morning, so you or she didn't call you. You want to know what's happening. So the fact that you didn't, you, that that it just came spontaneously. Hmm. This is what you do when you learn whatever you learn. Whether when you finish writing it or the playwright writes it for you, once you learn it, you learn it so well that even when you are not you are not thinking about it, because if you have to think about lines to memorize them when you're on stage then you don't know the speech well enough. Hmm. Okay. That's what I tell okay. my actors. They have to be able, and what I do sometimes is I rehearse when they have dropped their scripts and they tell me they know the lines. I rehearse them. First, I start them triple speed. So they'll say like, I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. I'm going to, and then they have to say it. If they don't drop any line, then they have to say it. Uh, at double speed and so on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Let me flip that around. We start normal speed, double speed, triple speed, mm -hmm. so that you should be able to rattle it off. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't just rattle off speeches on stage, then you slow them down, then you put your pauses, you know, and you, and, and you pay attention to your stops and so on. But you really, there's no shortcut to, to presenting something properly. And Actors know this, storytellers know this, and people who are doing speech know this. Mm -hmm. Now, the good thing about people when people are at the podium is that they have a speech in front of them, so they can refer to it. Yeah. And, and sometimes they pause a little bit or they, they look down at their paper and so on. In, the day, in these days now, you have teleprompters. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, you can just look. And in the old days, even the great actors, they had what you used to call cue cards. Cue cards. And they, they, somebody would hold them up and the actors read them just like tell it was the old time teleprompters yeah um but yeah set it and forget it learn it as though you have never learned it and then when you say it, you'll be saying it coming from somewhere that's that's there like a thought like it becomes a thought back in your head okay. reverse it and make the words back into a thought okay so nikita what else did you have for us in a question and then we're going to go quickly into some of the videos so people can see yeah. um, some great Caribbean storytellers in action. Yeah. And the videos will exemplify what some of what we're talking about and we can talk a little bit and point out. Or, or as a matter of fact, the people who are, our, our audience can even give us the feedback and say, you know, I noticed Paul did this or I noticed Amina did this when she started. And so that would be an interesting conversation to have. Sounds good. So Nikita, okay. anything else? Yeah, another great one here. How can we use storytelling to be better leaders? How can this concept of using storytelling help us in the workforce? Workplace, sorry. I love that because, and I'll start there, because Mr. Henry spoke about passion and authenticity, being yourself. And I think when, when we use stories, it allows the audience to see a little bit of our character our, our, uh, who we are, our personality, um, and that can endear people to us, that can mm -hmm. help them to engage with us. If we're passionate about the story that we're sharing, the message in that story, that helps the audience to connect with us. It's this idea, Mr. Henry, you, you've also talked about honesty, yeah. because in our stories, there's an element of honesty, which, and all of these, I think, are important for, yes. for leadership. Yes. That's what people right. are looking for. I think what, what audiences want, I mean, leaders are people who have to inspire. Yes. That's, the main thing is that they must inspire other people. And they must also not just inspire, but they must, they must set the example or even live by the examples that they ask people to live by. Mm -hmm. To me, that those are good leaders. Right. And so when you present a story on stage, whether you present it through the actor's medium or through the, the storytellers or through the through a speech to, to a university or whatever, when when you do either of those things, what you're doing is you're presenting, you're opening yourself that vulnerability in you. Mm. And when you're honest, an audience knows. You see, a lot of people believe that audiences are not sensible. Sometimes they think the audiences don't know. But audiences, when you're doing your work, they're doing their work at the same time. Remember that. They're mm -hmm. assessing you. They're listening to you. Even if the speech is not good that you're giving, that's not so important. What they want is to find a connection with you. Right. To find that vulnerability that you have. 
which links with theirs. And then you get that. So, so, so what I'm saying then, another word for it is you have to have a certain amount of empathy to understand the audience's feeling. If you go, if you went to a specific area of a country and something is happening and you go to de deliver a speech or the firm is not doing well and you go to deliver a speech, then what you say to those people, you have to be able to speak from position of understanding, of empathizing with them, of knowing how they feel about this so that whatever you say, you know, makes sense to them. Right. If you look at the great speakers, whether it's President, former President Obama, or, or, or any of these guys, the, the, these preachers on, on TV or whoever, some of them anyway, um, you'll see that they do that. You know, they, there's, a, there's a great sense of empathy, honesty, and so on. Now, mind you, they're good actors, and so some people can come over as empathetic and honest, and they're not. But that's another story for a lot of time. Okay. So I I want us to cue maybe the Paul Keane Douglas yeah, video yeah. so we can talk about that. So while that's queuing, Nikita, do you have another comment or question for us? Yeah. Should every speech be a story or should every speech be made into a story? Hmm. That's an interesting one. Should every speech be a story or should the speech be made into a story? Well, Every speech has a story. Every speech is not a story, but every speech has a story. Hmm. In other words, what you do is you, 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 you create the story and you tell it. And the, and the flip side is what should... should or should the speech be made into a story? Yeah. Well, again, you can, you, you, the format that you're using, yes, you, you, you can take a speech, but the speech, but you, but you might make it more of a story. In other words, the, the, you know, the classic, somebody asked about it, stories. You know, the, the, the classic formula is you have a beginning or an exposition, and you know this from writing essays in school. Right. You have what they call the middle, mm -hmm. and then you have the end, where you're wrapping up the things and you're tying ends off and so on. Yeah. Those are the three basic areas. So you can you can certainly do that, but I, I would say that the, the speech, the speech is not the story. The story is in the speech. Mm -hmm. And, and a story can have, a speech can have several stories. Several stories, It just yeah. depends on the point that you want to drive home yeah. to your audience. Because yeah. remember, stories also simplify for the audience what you're saying. So if you are doing something that, that might be very technical, then you will give a story. And I, I hope people, excuse me, but I, I, let, let's make a reference. When you look at, um, for the Bible, and you look in the New Testament, Jesus used stories yeah. to help people yeah. understand what he was saying and to express what he was saying yeah. so they understood so yeah. stories have a place in helping people to understand what you're saying especially if if what you're sharing is very difficult to take in it might be very technical yeah and in the bible those who know the bible is called them parables mm -hmm. jesus spoke in parables you know short a sto short stories with messages they always had a message right in them and, and this is what we're talking about in storytelling. There is a message mm -hmm. that you're delivering. So when, when we talk about, when Christ talks about when it's feeding the, 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 you know, the loaves and so on, the, the, the prodigal son, the, the, the man he met on the way, um, I, I don't Samaritan. know. Good Samaritan. Yeah. All these things have messages. And a lot of the great writers, um, whether it's Shakespeare, Khalil Gibran, all of them, Tolstoy, all of the great writers of the world, Cervantes, whoever you name them, they all do this. They all have great stories, and within those stories, there are parables. So the story is made up of a series of parables. Hmm. And I don't mean all stories, but some stories. You can certainly do that. Yeah. You know, they used to, they, they, the English poetry had at one time, what they used to call it, they used to call them, um, um, I remember this balance. You know, mm -hmm. the honest thing, you know, the king sits in dumb from nine town drinking the blue red wine. Oh, where will I get the skilly skipper to sail this new ship of mine? And he's basically talking about they don't have a guy to go and, and, and sail this ship. He's right. drinking wine and man, I need a, I need a sail. And, but what they've done is they've taken a long story and, and made it short. Okay. So we're going to do a short video and just to give you a, a sense of what some of our storytellers do. In your country, don't do them in ours, you know? I mean, but the accent, you know, 
and the way we speak in the Caribbean creates problems. Because you know, where we, the way we speak, what we say is not necessarily what we are saying. <laughs> you know, we say one thing, and depending on how we say it, how we put the face, how we put the eye, it means something else. Because we speak in pictures. Other day, where are you living? I see a woman running behind the garbage truck. She say, you have room for more garbage? So that's yes, man, jump in, jump in. Yeah. So you see how important it is that we say what we really mean. Yes, this accent, the way we speak, is very, very problematic. Other day I heard a minister of tourism say, um, the tourist industry is on the precipice of disaster. It is time we take a giant step forward. You know? So you see, the accent is very much part of the problem of communication in the Caribbean. So we have to learn how to listen and how to speak properly, remembering all the different accents. But the other problem we have is the hands. You know, this all West Indians love to talk with their hands. If you want to worship a West Indian, don't tell him or tell your hand and you can't talk. No, I have a theory about that. That came from Africa. You see, in the old days, when we lived in Africa, we had lion to fight, alligator jump over, spears to throw, vines to swing on, high line off and rhinoceros, all that kind of thing. They'd pick us up and drop us in the West Indies, perhaps. No lion, no tiger, but we have all the action still. But I love that piece, Mr. Henry, because that is so true, you know, the, the way, and it goes back to the point you were making mm -hmm. about how we speak and the things we say, and also, you know, <laughs> the gestures, how, mm -hmm. how lively we are as Caribbean people. But we have uh, another video that we'd like to share, and you want to introduce this one, Mr. Henry? Yeah, um, this one is by, again, one of the great storytellers of the Caribbean, uh, perhaps in, in Jamaica anyway, second only to Miss Lou, uh, Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks. Amina is a very gracious. She's been coming to the Cayman Islands for the last 18, I think we, we've done Gimme Story 18 years and she's come every time mm -hmm. uh, to perform for us. Just a wonderful woman, a wonderful storyteller. And she, Amina travels all over the world to tell stories. Uh, and, and it, just this, this particular piece was was that the uh, Smith Martha there, I think, mm -hmm. and it'll be interesting for you to hear how she starts the story, how she engages the audience, and so on. Have a look. So we have the full video, but we're going to show you a snippet of it, uh, just so you can see um, Dr. Amina in yeah. action. <laughs> Crab no have no head? <laughs> you ever see crab with a head? Answer me, man. Don't just sit there and laugh. Have you ever seen crab with a head? No. All right then. You want to know why crab no have no head? Yes. Once upon a time, crab father was the chief head maker in the village. Any kind of head you want, crab father would have make it. He make head with grey hair like Henry Muto. He make blonde hair like yours. Me goodly sir, he make a head like me and you one. Crab father would I make head for the United States given the chance. Any kind of head you want, crab father would I make it. Now, crab father born in a time and place where he believed in passing on the skills, you know? Crab father born B.C. Before computer. <laughs> and people who born in that time and place believe in passing on the skills. So I'm calling son who born A.D. After that. <laughs> B.C. and A.D.? Yeah, but again, you see, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things which 
even again, it, it doesn't matter whether you're act performing or whatever. She's engaging the audience. She she speaks in the language in which she's comfortable, right, in her own dialect, which is what she does. And she does it deliberately because part of her own mission is obviously to promote the language of Jamaica. So all of those things are important. If you do something and, you, and you're comfortable in whatever language you are, then use the language. Um, the other thing, of course, which sometimes is not as easy is because Amin is speaking to an audience. She understands her audience. So she knows that the audience will understand her, mm. right? And she understands them because, again, we come in with that empathy. She has studied them. She knows them. So she knows when she says something it, it, as a joke, it, they will get it right away. Mm. Una knows the crab, crab no her head, mm -hmm. and so on, right? So she's using these techniques. And one of the things which I find very interesting, we talked about gesture, you know, the hands. I, I, I want to challenge you when you go home and you listen to this tape. Don't look at the video. Just listen to Amina with your head turned away from the video and you will, you will see the gestures in her voice. Okay. Now gestures that, in the her gestures voice. in her voice. Okay. So when you, are able, when you are able to do that, then you know your material, you know your audience, and you know yourself and your story so well that you are able to talk without, people can look at you and see you gesturing without, they can almost tell you where you're gesturing by where the emphasis of her lines are, of her words are. You can, you, can, you can try that for me and you will see. So you all have a challenge. You've got some homework <laughs> from Mr. Henry yeah, to it. go and practice. And that's this important because Mr. Henry, as yeah. uh, in public speaking to, that's one of the tips that we have learned is that sometimes you just listen, you record yourself and just yeah. listen to yourself. And then you sometimes you just watch yourself without hearing any audio. Yeah. And in both of those, it, it also tells yeah. stories because it tells you, you know, to your point, where things are supposed to be, what your action is supposed to yeah. be, and how you incorporate it. And this can be done in professional settings. This can be done for technical presentations you're doing for work. Yeah, yeah. This is a rule of thumb. This is a has to be, you know, you on a stage performing. This could be you going in to present on a Monday morning for your team. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that they can't this can't be done. Now we have a- Can I just add one thing yes, here? Yes. One thing I'd like to add is, is if you're going to be a storyteller, whether it's an actor or whatever, mm -hmm. okay. you, folks, believe me, you have to read. It, I don't know, I, some of you obviously read, but I, I'm talking read, read everything, right? Read, read the toilet paper, even if you don't have any, <laughs> any words on it, just read. Because the more you read, is the more knowledge you, you have. You don't, you're not reading or learning anything, but just read. Get books and read, you know? Um, and, and you will find that, that it, this whole business, um, the more you know about a subject and the different, like we talked about storytelling through various acting, music, etc. Dance, as a matter of fact, tells stories. Mm -hmm. Dance. M movement to music. Who would have thought? And dance tells powerful stories. If you doubt me, look at the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica. Look at Alvin Ailey. And look at some of the great dance companies from abroad. And you will see the messages there. And, and, and all the things that we're talking about. So what we're talking about is not limited to any one particular track of, of being a storyteller. Right. It, 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 if you read enough about it, I think, I think you, you'll be good. You can only be good. So we're getting close to wrapping up, Mr. Henry, yeah. but I want to ask Nikita if there are any questions or comments in the chat, and as she prepares one or two more for us, I, I've been seeing the, the, the stuff popping up, but we really can't read because of the conversation. And But I do want to acknowledge our special guest with us tonight. I'm not going to put her on the spot uh, to speak, but I want to say we are very honored and very happy to have Dr. Amina with us. So yes, so Ooh. thank you very much for joining us. We are Hi, so happy to have you <laughs> join us um, in the chat. But um, but Nikita, do you have anything for us? Yep, there are a few comments here. People are really loving the videos. Yes. <laughs> um, Camille Joseph asks, 
how do you overcome a self-awareness of your voice and how it sounds in the middle of a speech? Mm, in the middle. Well, I, I mean, I'm not too sure uh, what the specific answer to that is, but this happens to many people. You know, there are people who say they hate their voices. Mm. Mm -hmm. I never listen back to anything I do. <laughs> I, I, it doesn't matter to me what I do, it, it's done and gone. I don't listen back to it. But there are some people who love their own voice. You know, people say you love the sound of your voice. You know, some people love their voices. But, uh, but how, you, how you overcome that, if, 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 like you said, hearing your voice in the middle, middle of a speech, mm -hmm. that's really difficult to see. I've not encountered it, so it's really difficult for me to say you can overcome it by doing this mm -hmm. um but but I, I suppose maybe maybe if if you know dr Mina is there and maybe i don't know if she's ever encountered it but she might even be able to type something in that mm -hmm. might help you but I'll, yeah. I'll work on that one for you i know sometimes that what where i found that happen is if you're on a radio interview and you have some sort of feedback yeah, and then you listen, catch listen, yourself yeah. and you're like, oh my goodness, that, that's me. And it catches you off guard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's focus. It's focus. It, it, it's very difficult. I mean, these things, look, all of these things happen. All these things will happen to you. You'll forget lines, you'll go blank, all these things. It's life. It's part of life. And life doesn't end because you go blank one day. Please don't, don't feel that you're, you're, you're a failure or anything is going to happen bad to you. If you suddenly go blank and somebody, nobody's going to, and audiences are, believe me or not, believe it or not, audiences are generally very kind. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, they're not going to throw stones. It's not, it's not Skinner Park in Trinidad Carnival. It's, <laughs> it's just <laughs> telling a story. So they're not going to throw toilet rolls or tomatoes or whatever. At you. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting. So to that, Mr. Henry, two things I want to share with people. One of the things that we learned in Toastmasters is, is the fact that, you know, you can be prepared for the unexpected. So they always say have a little bank of a, a one-liner or something that if you forget what you're about to say, you throw it in. And it can help you yes. feel you buy time. Here. You buy the you, time. You buy time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, yes. you do it. You do on stage, you do it. I mean, there are people who, you know, you go blank. It's what you say, you go blank. And you and, and you know uh, you, you the other act is supposed to give you a cue and they don't give you the cue and you know that they're in trouble and if you have the presence of mind and you are focused that and you know they play well enough then you are able to get them out of trouble. Mm -hmm. If you are an individual, then you have to have something in your bag to help you to buy time. Yeah. You you put it there and say you know what I might retrieve this. What they, what what they call it in these game shows they call it something like like. But you have a, like, a, like a token, you put it in your bag okay. and you take it out and you say, okay, I'll use this. Oh, your lifeline. Yeah. It's you a lifeline. Life Get a lifeline. Give yourself people. a couple of lifelines. So yeah. Those are just techniques that you can use. Um, right. because it, it, no one can ever say that you won't one day forget things yeah. or, or go blank or the thought, your thoughts stray. Yeah. Because concentration is really, really important in, in, all, in all of this that we're talking about. Yeah. You have to be concentrated. You have to be focused. Yeah. And Nikita, I'm going to take one more question or comment because, you know, Mr. Henry and I will chat all night, mm -hmm. but I know some of you have your dinner to go and get to. But um, <laughs> So I'll give you one quick comment and one final question. So Ingrid says, take the focus off of you and focus on the audience as it's mm -hmm. not about you after all, it's all about your audience. So that comment was in relation to the question about hearing yourself in the middle of a speech. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 mm -hmm. right, yes. Uh, and great. the final yeah, question, suggestion. Yeah. yeah, the final question is, would you recommend using acting techniques to enhance storytelling? So using acting techniques to enhance storytelling. Yes, of course, of course, like, like I was saying all along, that is, that, Perhaps that's the best, because I come from an acting tradition, that's the thing I know best. And I know that, I know that when I, I have never, A, suffered from stage fright. When I tell people that I don't know what stage fright is, you know, they, 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 they think, oh, how, how you don't get stage fright? But I know great actors, great actors, who people who are considered great actors, have said I have terrible stage fright just before I go on stage. And even actors that I work with here, a lot of them have stage fright. We have to do deep breathing exercises and so on. So, you know, you, 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 it's 
you have. Yeah. You be kind to yourself. I just saw a comment from Lydia talking about the voice and learning to love your voice. And just like you're learning to love your voice, you have to learn to love your own stories yeah. because that. As we get into our wrap up, I will ask Mark to share some of our key takeaways for you tonight. You know, I said to you all, I hope when you finish with this masterclass, you've learned one thing. I know I've been learning a lot. So I hope that you all have like three or four things that you got out of tonight's session as you wrap it up. But we want to make sure that, you know, we just leave you with some keynotes. So if we, Mr. Henry spoke on the pyramid. So we'll share that again on the next slide, which is the elements of effective communication. So remembering that you might have a general topic, but the story is what helps you to relay your message to your audience. So you're using the stories to get your point across. And then if we go to the next slide, the key takeaways. So we want to get the audience on our side, but it means that we have to show a level of empathy, honesty, and passion. We talked mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. We talked about the fact that there are things in our toolbox that we can use to for stories and incorporating stories, it's the memory in our thoughts, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 our personality, you know, who we are, our authentic self. We talked a little bit about the critical five minutes or, well, the critical speaking point anyway when you're presenting is to stay calm. Even if you forget something, you know, you sorry, give yourself some lifelines. But to help you also forget one of the key lifelines is to rehearse, to rehear. So practice, 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 so you can set it and forget, forget it. it. <laughs> yes, I love it. Set it and forget it. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you to the, to the general manager, Danielle, and the staff at Caribbean Club. Excellent. We have, unfortunately, you know, you all haven't been able to see the, the gorgeous surroundings because it's now nightfall, but the beautiful surroundings that we're in at Caribbean Club. Again, thank you to the staff at Caribbean Club for hosting us tonight. I want to thank the technical team, Mr. Mark Ray, who's been working feverishly behind the scenes, making sure everything happens. And of course, Nikita, who has been the question, our host, uh, taking your questions and comments. I want to say a special thank you to the vision team. This is a team of people who are helping me get this series off um, and flying. This is a team that tells me we're going big or we're going big. There's no going home. There's no going home. We're going big or going big. So Crystal, Gary, Georgianne, Lydia, Rhonda, and Sasha, a huge thank you. You are magnifique. And then Mr. Henry Mutu. Yes. I know he does not like the term master class. I, I discovered that in an interview we were doing. He's like, no, no, no. no. But I have to tell you, every time I speak with Mr. Henry, I leave with not one thing, I leave with many things. So it has been an honor. And of course, to my audience, this is so special. This is the launch of something incredible. Thank you for participating. And I want to say I'd love to see you on September the 29th because we have Mr. Frankie Flowers. Mr. Frankie Flowers, he is an award-winning film writer and director. He has worked with the likes of Orlando Bloom, Vin Diesel, Zoe Saldana. And started here at the Harakuri Theater. And started here with Mr. Henry. Started <laughs> with me at the Harakuri Theater when he was 14 or 15 14. in John Gray High School. Yeah. And he's, he's just taken off from there. Sorry. No, no, I love that. I love, you see the connection? You see the connection? But he's from right here, so he came in again. And we are going to be having a conversation on September 29th, but on shifting perspectives and we're, how we write our own stories. So how do we show up in film? I, I'm telling you, when we talk Netflix, Hulu, everything in the world of storytelling from the perspective of film, you don't want to miss mm -hmm. this young gentleman. Um, but that is it. I feel so happy for you all to be here. We will make this recording available. And I also want to ask Mark if he can put the survey into the chat very quickly. We want to get some feedback from you all on future topics and what else we will be uh, sharing. 
Um, but as I said, we'll host them twice a month. So the next one is September with Frankie Flores. And then after that, we're going to have a best selling author and motivational coach, Simon T. Bailey, October 12th, talking about reinvention. So for all of us who are coming out of COVID and feeling a little shook, like I've got to get myself settled, you do not want to miss that one either. We're going to spark your restart. So we got some great masterclasses, people. So thank you very much. Mm. And have a wonderful night. Thank you, night. thank you, folks. And thank you, you, and thank, Mr. you and thank you for having me in the chat. And it was, it was great. All right. Hopefully, you know, we left something with people. Hopefully so. Thank Goodbye, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.